Welcome to a new vlog, a rather short video for today. I'm gonna be presenting this little guy. You might recognize the design. It's my Volink USB to serial converter, but in its uh, latest revision B, which has a few important upgrades over the previous one. And these are things that I noticed while using the module almost daily. So I think you will all agree with me that uh, these are some good improvements that justified this revision B. In general, I try to keep the board the same size because I like this form factor, the uh, arrangement of the connectors that I have, the fact that I have my own uh, Volink standard JST connector that I use for all of the boards that I designed. So all of that stayed the same, but due to the ongoing chip shortage, I'd had to pick a slightly different USB to serial chip. We are now using the uh, CP2102 in QFN28 package, the A02 revision. So generally this chip is very similar to the uh, previous one we were using, except that it is a bit newer, but you still get up to 3 million baud rate, uh, which is great. And because of the new chip, this meant uh, redesigning the uh, passives to support this new chip and redoing uh, all of the layout. Also, because of the ongoing chip shortage, uh, prices for electronic components have gone up in the past year. That is if you still uh, are able to find them in stock. And I will have to run the numbers for this uh, particular design. But I have no choice but to increase the cost of the unit on my Tindy store uh, if I am to continue making these. I also upgraded to a uh, USB full speed uh, rated ESD protection diode with, which basically has lower capacitance. This is the uh, TPSP0503 and this should mean no connection issues while at the same time offering the recommended protection level on the USB uh, connection together with a uh, PTC resettable fuse. But before I continue telling you more about this new design, let me mention the sponsor of this video, Altium Designer. And if you're doing PCB design yourself, then Altium is definitely one of the most advanced PCB design softwares on the market that you should check out. It has some pretty advanced features which enable collaboration among multiple team members. So there is no wonder they are a popular choice in the professional PCB design world. Check out the link I've placed in the description below to sign up for a free trial of Altium. We still have the uh, same USB Type-C connector and the much needed auto reset circuitry for the uh, Espressif modules. As you may know, I design a lot of boards using ESP32s uh, these days and all of those are programmed using a Volink via the Volink JST connection. But if you've watched Vollog 357, you might be aware of this problem that tends to happen. And I won't go into details of that because it's all discussed in that video. But uh, a quick fix was to add a capacitor to the enable line. Here is how I did it in uh, revision A. There was no place for this capacitor on the PCB. Well, this new revision has that uh, capacitor. It's C6 and uh, it should mean increased reliability for uh, programming all of these wireless modules. One of the things that I struggled with uh, revision A is the uh, rather limited current capability of the uh, internal 3.3 volt regulator. It was just 100 milliamps and that wasn't really enough for programming and uh, powering uh, Wi-Fi modules like the SP32 from the uh, Volink. So I decided to address that by adding a uh, separate 3.3 volt LDO that can supply up to 600 milliamps if needed. With this, I should now be able to program boards like the ESP32 uh, thermostat valve controller uh, or like my uh, CAN light boards and power them directly from the volt link. A big advantage for the valve controller board is that you no longer would need to have the board connected to mains power for programming. It would get the power from the programming tool. And I think that's a uh, very nice improvement. Uh, there is still one uh, missing upgrade from uh, revision B and I kind of thought about it after already placing an order for these uh, PCBs. So it didn't make it into revision B, but to be honest, it's not something that you, a potential user, might benefit from. It's more an improvement on the manufacturing side of things. I would like to have the uh, these two transistors used for the auto reset circuitry into a single package. And uh, there are even packages which feature the uh, two transistors plus their uh, biasing resistors. So 
with a single package, I could be turning four discrete components into a single one and that would save time during the assembly and it would probably allow me to save a few cents on the bomb cost as well. So at some point I will probably uh, do a revision C with that upgrade in mind as well but until then uh, this is the revision that uh, I will make available through my Tindy store I know a lot of people are signed up on the waitlist so if you want one check out my Tindy store this should become available uh, pretty soon and uh, there will only be uh, limited stock available I will add the link to the uh, product page on screen right now I still find it annoying that I need to use the Scilabs Simplicity Studio and create a project, pick a device and configure the GPIO just so I can get basic uh, LED RX and TX signaling because that involves a lot of manual work for something that should be default behavior if you ask me but I know some people disagree with that so you could let me know in the comments uh, what you think, do you agree with me that TX and RX activity LEDs should be enabled by default in this kind of chip or not? Because if they're enabled by default and you don't want to use them in your particular design, you just don't connect LEDs to those pins. It's that simple. But put it in the comments below and uh, try to explain why you would feel different. For now, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this turned out and uh, I've tested it, I've programmed a number of boards and it works uh, just nice. That was all for today, a quick update on this project. As usual, I would really appreciate if you would uh, smash that like button if you haven't already or maybe consider supporting me on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to help me keep these uh, videos coming once per week. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you next time.